Hey guys, it's May May. I'm sorry if you were in on that first one. I forgot to turn my airplane mode on and if we had gone live with that, we'd have been in trouble because we would have had a lot of interruptions. <laughs> now, warning, today, it is a very busy day around May May Made It. There is a Bible study going on with several women. Um, my cousin is here decorating Vinnie's Vittles kitchen. So there's noise and I can't do anything about it. And I was gonna film this morning, but I couldn't film for noise either. So we're gonna do the Purse Together Live. Now here's the other thing about doing the Purse Together Live. I don't have Vince with me today, so it's just gonna be me and I've got my Troll Patrol and Amanda is watching from the other room so she can answer any questions. But I want us to be able to focus on this purse. And I actually think doing this live is a better deal because um, you'll be able to ask me questions as I go because this one is not going to be the easiest one. It's not going to be bad, okay? So, oh, did you pray for me to be live? You're so sweet. Okay, I'm going to jump into this. The only thing I'm going to ask you guys to do is if you have a question, put it in capital letters. And if I miss a question, like if I don't get it, I will get to it because I want to spend a lot of time on the purse. All right, let's talk about it real quick before we get into it. So, I wanted to make another purse and I... I looked everywhere for ideas and designs and things like that and I thought, you know, I want to make something bigger and this one is bigger. Let me tell you how much bigger this one is. This one, at the bottom, it is eight and a half wide, okay? And to the top, I think it's six inches, six inches. So eight and a half by six. But do you see this angle in here? That's what I wanted. And we can't get that without doing some kind of fancy footwork, but I did it in such a way you do not have to have any, I use no dies. The only thing I used here was my scoreboard, a ruler, my um, paper trimmer, and a corner rounder, okay? So that's what we're gonna use today. And a couple little things for embellishments, but let's get started. All right, let's talk measurements that you're gonna need. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay all this stuff out. I'm making a different pattern purse today. So we're gonna talk about the papers you're gonna need, okay? You're gonna need two pieces of eight and a half by 11, all right? So I'm using white as my base. You can use any old color you want, but I thought I'd use white. And then if I needed to make any marks for you guys, it'd show up really well, okay? So two pieces of eight and a half by 11. You're also going to need two pieces that are four by eight. I'm sorry, four by eight and a half. Thank you, Tamitha, I forgot. All these measurements will be in the blog post that will go live after the video, okay? So four pieces that are, I mean, two pieces that are four by eight and a half, okay? So add that to this pile. Then you're gonna need your purse patterns, whatever you want, okay? So here's what we've got. This piece is, I'm looking at my cheat sheet here. This is, let me just measure it because I don't like to tell you guys wrong in case you're writing it down now but don't worry, they'll be on the blog. So eight and a quarter by five and three fourths. That's what this one is, okay? You need two of those. And then these little guys, I'm checking my mat on the top, on, on the top too. Six and three quarters by one and three fourths. Two of those, okay? Then you're gonna need some handles. These handles are one and a quarter by 12, okay? And then you're gonna need a bow. And this is one and a quarter by 12 to also. So let me show you what I've done. I went through a paper pack and I chose my purse. I wanna point it to you this way. I chose my purse pattern, which this polka dot is this polka dot for today, okay? I chose my handle pattern, which is this polka dot. I chose this to be on my flap, which we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. And then I chose this to be my bow. I think this will be cute. I don't really know how it's gonna turn out but I wanna show you the paper pad. We got some new 12 by 12 paper pads in, but they won't be live till after this video. Vince asked me to give him a few minutes to get a bunch of orders caught up. So this one is the one I'm using for this purse, but I wanna tell you, you need two of these if you're gonna use one of these 12 by 12s because you only get one sheet of each of these patterns. And for this piece, because of the size, you need this one, and this one from a 12 by 12 piece of paper, okay? So I'm using two of these. This is summer fun, and this afternoon when, when you get onto the, um, to the website, you'll see a whole bunch of other really cool 12 by 12 papers. Okay, whoo, I said a lot in a few minutes. Let's get started. This is, we're already into it. Okay, I'm gonna be using my large Martha Stewart um, scoreboard. This has been discontinued, guys. We just learned this not long ago. And we are looking for another one, but I wanna find one with a really good price point. 
So it may take me a minute, okay? But we're looking for another one to replace this with. Now for these eight and a half by 11 pieces, you are gonna score this. Um, it's gonna be a little bit, let's see if we can do it this way. I did not tell Tamith of my score marks. I'm gonna be doing a lot of double checking today because I don't wanna tell anybody anything incorrectly. So, is that right? Yes. And then, is that right? Yes, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna double check before I tell you anything. We're gonna score this at eight inches. Now, how much do you wanna know, Go like how much of the design process do you want to know, okay? Because if you want me to tell you why I'm choosing these measurements, I will tell you. Do you want me to do that? <laughs> Because I will. The first thing I'm going to do is score it two inches. So right here at the top, two inches. Okay. Then I'm going to score here at eight inches. Okay. So some of you guys want to know the design process. Okay. So this purse, this is my base of the purse. So I actually decided I wanted my base to be three inches. That's why I'm scoring at eight. There's, there's no magic number to eight. I decided my base needed to be a certain width. So if you guys are making a purse and you need the base to be a certain width, adjust it in this spot, okay? Eight. Now this scoring at two is because I wanted my flap to be two inches. I thought it was a good measurement for the front of the bag, so that's why it got to be two. But if you adjust anything, just think about that, okay? Now I'm going to turn this around, and I'm going to score this at, let me do, look, measure twice, cut once, do another check really quick. Yes. <laughs> um, I said I'm going to score this. I'm not going to score this. I'm going to mark it. And I cleaned up before this. Why do I clean up before videos? That is crazy. Okay. So I'm going to mark this at three quarters of an inch just with a little pencil tick mark. Okay. And I'm going to mark it three quarters of an inch in from the side, which is seven and three quarters. Three quarters of an inch in. So in the design process, I decided I wanted an angle on my bag. I decided how thick of an angle or how wide of an angle I wanted, and that's why I went with three quarters. You could change this, but if you do, it's gonna change all your other measurements. Just be ready for that, okay? So that's one sheet. We're gonna do exactly the same to the second sheet. So you'll get to see this again a little clearer. So I'm gonna put this in on the long side, okay? I'm gonna score it two inches and I'm gonna score it eight inches. I know those measurements because I've already worked all this out, okay? Now I'm gonna turn it this way, and I'm gonna do those same marks again, three quarters, and down here at seven and three quarters. So that brings me in three quarters and three quarters, all right? Now, these two pieces are now ready for the paper trimmer. So I'm gonna put these aside until we get to paper trimmer, and I'm not gonna lose them. I put them right behind me. If I lose them, somebody tell me. <laughs> okay, these are our flaps. Now, before I make this flap, I want to show you this. This is what we're going to construct, okay? This is why it gets a little hard, because we're going to construct this piece. But it's not hard if you'll just kind of watch me and hang in with me, okay? We're going to take this piece of cardstock and turn it into this, all right? And I'm going to do it twice, so you'll totally get it. So I'm gonna sit this guy off to the side to be kind of our cheat. So if you get lost, you can go, what are we doing again? This is what we're doing, okay? I'm gonna turn this into my scoreboard the long way, okay? I'm going to score this guy at, let me do the math, at five and a half. I'm coming up three inches, okay? I'm coming up from the bottom three inches. That's how I decided that, all right? Then I'm going to turn this in my trimmer or in my scoreboard, and we're going to make some marks. We're going to make a mark at half an inch, one inch, three inches, and three and a half. Okay, that's all I'm going to do to this piece right now. Okay, let's do one more so it makes sense. Into our scoreboard, I'm coming up from the bottom three inches, which is going to take me to five and a half. So one inch, two inch, three inches. Coming up from the bottom flap, okay? That's five and a half. If you just need to know five and a half, that's what that is. I'm gonna turn it in here, and I'm going to make a mark. Half an inch, one inch, three inches, three and a half inches. So those are my marks. Now these are ready to go to the paper trimmer as well, 
okay? Um, any other scoring we have to do, we'll do later. For now, I wanna to get to the, to the trimming. All right, before I go to trimming, any question on those pieces I just showed you? Any questions before we get to the paper trimmer? I think we can do questions in stages. So, oh, my computer went dark for a second. So, I'm gonna wait just a second for questions. And while you're put, typing your questions, I gotta show you that the fundraiser bottle is in. This is the fundraiser bottle. If you haven't heard about it, the purchase of this bottle, a, pr a portion of the proceeds of this purchased bottle go to help um, fund juvenile diabetes research, and it also goes to help fund the recent medical calls from our uh, Jeremy, who is our packer, and his son, who just found out he has type 1 diabetes. So it's here, and it's gold, and isn't it beautiful? And we love, love, love Art Glitter Glue for helping us to make this happen. And this one gets to have my logo on it. Shut up, I'm so excited. On the side, there's an explanation of what we're doing. And then here, you'll see that we've got, it's the perfect um, adhesive. And right here, you get a little scripture. Isn't that awesome? Perfect. Don't worry if you wish, if you missed any of the measurements, it's all gonna be on the blog. All right, so let's go to the trimmer. Here we go. I'm going to my big pieces of paper, okay? and to the trimmer. Make sure you can see it, good. We made these marks because we're gonna use them to get our angles, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. I am going to, oh, that's a two ounce bottle. Did I not tell you that's a two ounce bottle? I'm sorry. I'm gonna take that mark and put it on my trimmer line at the top. Then at the bottom, let me move this where you can see it, where I did that score mark here in, on the page, I'm gonna line that up to the trimmer line as well. So let me get it where you, as high up as I can get it so you can see it. So I've got my little dot and that score mark I made here at the bottom, all right? What I like to do, because I'm cutting an angle, and if you're not careful, you can push this, um, this paper and get a drag. I'm gonna show you how not to get a drag. The glue's $4.95, by the way. I should have said that, I apologize, it's $4.95. I'm gonna show you how to not get a drag. I'm gonna set my blade, and here's what I mean by that. My blade is right here in the um, trimmer thing. You see the blade right here? I'm gonna push this in and press this in. No, any products I'm talking about right now will not be live till after the show. Vince asked me to wait to give them a little time to catch up, so nothing is live till after the show. Any products that are, that are new today. I've set my blade, okay? I'm gonna run this up, and I'm gonna run this down. By doing that, I don't get that drag. Okay, so let me show you that. We've made this angle cut, and let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna put it over here to the black. So at the bottom, we're square. That's the base of our bag, okay? And this is now the angle of the side. So now what I wanna do is this other side, but I made the mark on the front of the page, so I'm just gonna turn it into my trimmer, and I'm gonna line it up the same way. Score mark, pencil mark. See that? This is my pencil mark down here. This is my score mark. I'm going to set my blade, push it in. I'm gonna go one direction and the other. And that way I don't get any drag. Now, you might be wondering, okay, what do we do about this score mark? Don't worry about it, just cut straight through it. So when you finish, I'm gonna turn this sideways so the whole page will, let's see if I can lay it down and show it to you. There we go, that's much better. Let's go this way. So now you can see the base of your purse stays square. Okay, the side, this is where your angle starts. Got it? And we're gonna do that to two pieces, so let's do the other one real quick. I put that beside me if I lose it. My front is beside me over there. So back to my pencil mark, right there at the top in the trimmer line. Score mark lined up at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna set my blade kind of in the middle. I'm gonna scoot it up and I'm gonna scoot it down. And then I'm gonna pull this out. All right, now then I'm gonna turn this page. Mark The pencil mark is here and the score mark is here. So I'm gonna line this up. I'm going to set my blade, go one way and then the other. There we go. So now we've got the same piece, all right? So two of those. Any questions about cutting this piece? Any questions? I wanna make sure that if you're lost, you got score mark, score mark, angles on the side, everything's good on that one. I'm gonna go in and move it out of the way, but if you have questions, I can still answer about that piece. Okay, 
I see no questions. That's good. I'm either doing my job right or I've lost everybody. <laughs> okay, this is the one that will get a little, my word is cantankerous, okay? This is where the struggle comes in. This is where all the math comes in. This is where all the ciphering comes in, okay? We want to make it look like this. So here's what we're gonna do. First things first. You know, these pencil marks we made at the top, okay? We're gonna work with the outside pencil marks. We're not worried about the middle ones, the outside pencil marks, okay? I'm gonna line one pencil mark into that um, line of my trimmer, and I'm gonna line my score mark down here into the bottom, okay? Super easy. I'm gonna set my blade again, go up and go down, and you're gonna end up with this angled cut, okay? So, this cut is actually this cut we just made. That's the angle we're doing. I'm gonna turn this upside down and do the same thing. Line up my pencil mark, line up my score mark, set my blade, slice, okay? Then, we're gonna do some fancy footwork. <laughs> now, we have to take off some width from this bottom, okay? So pay attention to what I'm fixing to do here. We're gonna deal with this bottom part. This piece sits in the base of your bag when you assemble it. I'm gonna turn it up to the top of my trimmer and I'm gonna line it to the half inch mark of my trimmer. See that? So I'm at half an inch. I'm gonna cut half an inch off, but I don't wanna cut all the way up the page. I only wanna to cut to that score mark that we made. All right? So what's gonna happen, I'm upside down. I'm gonna cut this to that score mark, half an inch. Now this trimmer makes this super easy because I have these lines on the side of the trimmer to line this up. So I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna kinda get my head over here so I can see where I'm at. And I'm only cutting that to the score mark. Let me show you what I did. Hey, Tony, see this? I just cut it to the score mark, all right? Then this guy can go away. I'm gonna trim him off. Perfect. So now I'm gonna do this so you can see where we're at. See this side? See this side? We're totally getting there, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing. I wanna cut half an inch off to the score mark on the other side. You can flip it over because we're not paying attention to pencil marks now. We're watching score marks, okay? Hey everyone. All right, I'm gonna bring this to that mark. Perfect. I'm gonna cut this away. I'm gonna do this twice, so don't worry, okay? If it's confusing, I will clear it up. Now then, you can see we're really getting close, right? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come right here to this angle, I mean to this little piece, and we're gonna make an angled snip. See that little angled snip? Easy, right? We'll do the same thing up here. It doesn't really matter how deep your angle is, as long as you're only going to your little mark, okay? Now I'm gonna come from that pencil mark, that second pencil mark, and angle out, okay? And then I'm just gonna angle in at the bottom. We're gonna do this twice, don't worry, okay? Now I'm gonna score, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other cut and then we're gonna score it too. So let's make the other one the same way. All right, we got our piece. First pencil, I mean the last one on the outside, your pencil mark on the outside lines up into your trimmer line. Your score mark lines up at the bottom, okay? Set that blade. If you have any questions about this part, now's the time to ask them and slice that angle, okay? I'm gonna turn this this way. Score mark, pencil mark into my trimmer line set that blade, run it up and down, and there's that angle, okay? Let's cut half an inch off of this side up to the score mark. I think you guys are either getting it or it's over your head so much you don't have a question. I hope it's not, I was worried about that. I don't want this to seem difficult. I tell you what, I'll even go back and make sure I put a photograph of what this flap is supposed to look like in the blog post, so maybe that'll help you there too. All right, half an inch here, up to my score mark, and then snip that away. All right, so that is now gone, okay? Now, I'm going to snip this flap, okay? I'm gonna snip from the edge at an angle to my, my pencil mark in the center, okay? I'm gonna go to this pencil mark and out and snip it, and I'm gonna go from this pencil mark and out to snip that one, all right? Now then, move these guys out of the way. So, we've got the trimming done. Now we just need to do some more scoring. How's it going? Is everybody with me? Make sure, because it's 
okay, it's a it's a lot, and I don't want anybody to feel lost. Because one reason is because we are going to have a contest about this one on our Facebook group. We want you guys to make this purse and share your creations with us. So I want to make sure everybody's getting it. Okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do now. We're going to score these edge angles. We had to do that trimming first because we couldn't get to this point without it, okay? So where our pencil mark is at the top, we should only have one pencil mark left because we cut the others away, okay? Then I'm gonna line that pencil mark and this inner piece here at the bottom, let me make sure you can see this. We're basically gonna score this flap we created. So where, the, where we cut up to that score mark and at this pencil mark, we're gonna score that. Okay, so we've created a flap. When we fold this, this is gonna be the side of our bag. Yay, right, makes sense? Now I'm gonna do the other side. Now the trick for this is you wanna make sure in your scoreboard, you have drawn like a black line on one of the score marks so you can see where you're going or any color line, just so you have a line there so you can see what you're scoring. Did that make sense? Did we get that? We've got two flaps. We went around the world to get there, but when you do this, it is a lot more, um, it's a lot easier to do once you actually do it. All right, so pencil mark, cut mark at the bottom, okay, slice, right? Now then, uh-oh, Laura, are you lost? If you're lost, tell me, I'll try to clear it up. Same thing again from that score mark and up. So there's our two flaps. So we have now created our side pieces, okay? I'm gonna erase these pencil marks just in case they show when we get done because we only needed them to kind of guide us. Remember guys, you can go back and watch this video as much as you want. That's one reason I'm kind of not answering as many questions as we go because I don't want you to have a whole bunch of fluff to get through. I will put a photo of this onto um, the blog post so you'll be able to see it. Tamitha, remind me of that, don't let me forget that. All right, now then, let's assemble the bag. Then, <laughs> in case I have messed anything up, um, I will, in case I've messed any of my other measurements up, we'll know, all right? Let's do some creasing. So let me get my bone folder out. Again, why do I clean up before these live shows? Craziness. Here it is, right staring me in the face, okay. <laughs> all right, I'm going to fold this flap we just scored in and crease it. Now, if you're using a pattern paper here, which you totally can do, just be mindful of your pattern. Just make sure you're folding your flaps to the right side, inside or outside. I think it'd be beautiful with pattern paper, right? All right, now I'm gonna fold this piece up, okay? Remember, this is the piece that's gonna attach to the bottom of our bag. Now, I like a sturdy base on a bag. This one's totally sturdy. I've given you plenty of flap to make this sturdy. If you wanna cut this down to sew paper, go right ahead. But I wanted a nice sturdy corner and a nice sturdy bag. Cause I don't know, I may put hand lotions or something that could get a little heavy, all right? So now I'm going to fold this in, crease this down and do the same thing all the way around. Um, Ashley, if you watch this back, you'll see why we did the five and a half score. You needed it to be able to make this piece. And because I'm gonna use it for a sturdy base. So let me show you. These are now gonna glue to the sides of our front base, the fronts we made, okay? So that's how that'll go. Move these out of the way. Let's get our fronts out. Let's get our fronts out. <laughs> now I'm going to fold one piece up and crease it down. Remember, this square piece is the base of your bag, okay? So it'll sit like this. Now, depending on what you wanna do with your flap, you might want your flap to stay up and like have kind of a semi-closed purse. I'm gonna bring my flap closed. So I want the flap to go over the front of the purse, okay? So let me show you this. So I've got my base and the flap is folded to the front of the purse. And we're gonna do that twice. So there's one, let's do it to the other side. I'm so proud of me for finding these. Are y'all not happy that I knew exactly where they were? All right, fold this in. Again, that is the base, okay, and it goes to the inside. So my flap's gonna go that way. It's gonna go toward the front. So I'm gonna fold it and crease it. We doing good so far? I'm gonna erase these pencils. I see some pencil marks. That might not bother some folks. It really doesn't bother me, but I'm gonna erase them while I'm here. <laughs> Why not? Did I have any here? No, yes, I do. Right here. Erase, erase. Okay. 
So we can now assemble. I'm gonna show you how I assembled. Actually, do I wanna assemble? Let's don't assemble yet. I'll tell you something I learned. It was a lot easier. I think it'd be a lot easier to put our pieces on with this flat than assembled. I assembled it first and then put my decorative pieces on. I'm not gonna do that. Another thing about that, I did not put a piece here. I left the sides white and I think that's fine. It doesn't bother me at all and I don't have to measure or figure out this angle for anything else, right? So I did not cover this. You totally can if you want to. You can just do the measurement at the end and you'll know what you need to do, but I'm not covering it. But let's go ahead and cover these pieces while they're flat. I think it'll be easier, okay? All right, so now we need to do some more trimming. This trimming is gonna be easy. I will show you how to make this super easy, okay? So these are the two pieces. I want this to be the polka dot of my bag. All right, the bottom is perfectly fine for this, the way I cut it, it's gonna sit perfect already. But we need to do an angle at the top, okay? I think this was half an inch, let me double check. Nope, three quarters. Okay, we need to do a three quarter inch angle at the top to make these fit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you, on my, I'm gonna show you a little trick, I thought I would show you. I do this a lot and I love to give you some tips and tricks when I can. Each one of these squares are a quarter of an inch on my board, okay? I wanna keep one bottom straight because this fits my bag already and I wanna cut a three quarter inch angle at the top. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep one end at the, at the cut blade, okay, at the cut line, and I'm just gonna pivot this in three quarters of an inch. So I've got one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. And if you look up here at the top, it lines up with the three quarter inch mark so you can be sure you're in the right place. So I'm gonna angle the top to that mark. Does that make sense? Does that, I didn't have to measure and mark anything. I can do it in my trimmer if I do it that way. So I'm gonna tr cut this out and you'll see. See, we just got our angle cut. I'm gonna do that one more time because I want it to make perfect sense. And I'm gonna flip it over. Look at these bugs on the back, aren't they cute? We call them doodle bugs. So lined up at my trimmer mark, okay, I'm gonna angle this in to the three quarter inch square on my cut on my trimmer and just slice that away without doing any kind of measuring or um, pencil marks don't have to and now i've got my shape now i'm going to do a dry run make sure we're good yay we are it fits in there just great okay punch buggies yeah we do that too punch buggies so and that'll come down like this now you can adjust that i want to show you something mine's pretty wide at the top but I'm fine with it because this is gonna flap down and be cover most of that. But if you only wanna do a half inch angle, you do what works for you, okay? Do what works for you. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do this other one at a half an inch and see if it fits better. And if it does, you guys can see, you, that way you can see the difference. Okay, so on my cut mark, this time I'm just gonna angle it into half an inch, which is right there. Staying on my cut mark. I'm setting my blade, going one direction and then the other. Let's see if that angle's better. Well, let me do the other side too. All right, set it on my cut, turn it to my half. Just pivot it. Do y'all like that pivot? Oh, slug bugs, that's funny. All right, so let's do it this way. All right, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna set this one in and see if half inch is a better angle. I was thinking it was half inch. Half inch is tight at the top. See that, it's a little tighter. So I'm gonna go back and do my three quarter. I think it looked better. So I need to do another quarter of an inch off. Same deal, I'm just gonna slide this into the quarter not having to make any measurements or anything. I'm just taking that angle off, doing the same thing I just showed you, okay? Does that tip help? Did that tip, was that new to anybody? To use those pieces like that on your trimmer? I hope so, because I think that makes super easy. Makes things easy. Okay, now then. So we've got this piece all angled and ready to fit into its spot, okay? I'm gonna close this down. Now we're gonna do this piece at the top. And I'm gonna do it in this pretty floral print right here, okay? Again, this is gonna be fine for the very bottom part, okay? It's set in there just fine. I'm gonna need, did I do this backwards? I did this piece backwards, look at that, y'all. I wanna change that. So, we may have to change a measurement, but don't worry, if we do, I'll let you know. What did I say on that? Yeah, I wanna do that different. All right, bear with me, I'm changing that one. I don't like the way it looks. So if you have your, this measurement, we're gonna change it. Don't worry, we can do it. We can do this on the fly, right? 
We're going to change that to 1 and 3 fourths by 7. I'm going to check it again in just a second. 1 and 3 fourths. I don't like the way it was looking, so I want to make sure. I do not want us to be messed up. Thank goodness I had extra paper. 1 and 3 fourths. You guys said you love it when I mess up. <laughs> you guys said that, that's your, that you love that, so you bring this back over. I want to measure again. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Okay. Look at my ruler. My ruler is so old that it's coming loose. I need to use some art litter glue in there and fix it. All right. Yes, I want to cut this down to seven inches. So seven, and then do my angle. All right. Well, let's just see. Let's just see. So I'm going to cut these to seven by one and three quarters. So if you had it, I don't remember what I told you last time. Let me think. What did I tell you last time? Six and three-fourths, make these seven. Not six and three-fourths, seven. All right. Cut this down. All right, are there any questions? So, Oh, Tamitha, I'm sorry. Are you yelling at me? What? <laughs> what did I do? I'm totally paying attention to this. If anybody would say anything, I'm sorry if I missed it because I'm totally paying attention to get this right because I do not want to mess this up. Not showing you. All right, seven inches here. All right, and now we're gonna cut a quarter of an inch angle. That's all I gotta cut, okay? A quarter of an inch. Don't, I know, I'm sorry. It's a better plan to do it this way. It's, I thought I was like, who don't make mad? Okay, because you were yelling at me. I was like, what? Okay, here we go. Back into our trimmer, okay? I'm gonna take a quarter of an inch off. So I'm gonna line it up to the cut mark at the top and angle this to the quarter of an inch, okay? Then, why are we yelling at Joni? What, did, did I miss something? Okay. Sorry, let's do the other side. Then, <laughs> no, we all mess up. It's paper crafting. We're gonna do that, right? Oh, did Joni come in late? Okay, it'll all be on the replay. I've answered a whole bunch of questions so far, so it'll all be on the replay, and we also will have a blog post. So never worry, all your measurements and everything will be on the blog post. So here I'm just taking these quarter of an inch off. Listen, and let me say this to everybody because a lot of people seem to be confused. Our live shows are 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, Tuesdays and Thursdays, every time. You don't have to worry about those times. That's when they are, so you'll know. 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, Tuesdays and Thursday. All right. Yeah, I didn't plan on doing today live, but I, I had so much going on in the place we had to. Oh, anyway, I'm backing up. Sorry, I said I wasn't going to do that. So this is good. I'm happy with this. Now, let me tell you something. This is not going to be perfect. Okay, this is gonna be, I forgot about that. This is not gonna be perfect. We're just trying to match some angles as we go and it'll look good, okay, when you're finished. Don't stress if it's not perfect. I don't do perfect. I hope you guys know that by now. You should, you've been watching me long enough. All right, let's glue some stuff down. Uh-oh, Judy's late too. Hello, Miss Judy, how are you doing? All right, I'm gonna glue this dude down and I'm using my um, special bottle for the first time ever. The first time I've ever used it, and you guys get to see it on camera. That's cool. I'm excited about that. All right, here we go. Stick this dude down. Y'all see me shaking? I shake. I tell y'all that all the time. I'm not making that up. Even on the live show, you can see it. All right. This is going to be cute with the polka dots. I love it. Oh, I thought Joni had a question because she wrote in caps. All right, here we go. Then I'm going to flip this down and glue this piece down. Oh, I like the florals and the polka dots together. That's going to be cute. Amy, do you shake? I'm a shaker. The maiden run. That's right. I like that. I'm trying to watch, y'all, because I don't want to miss, and I know that's frustrating when I have to back up. So I'm trying to watch comments, but if I miss you, I promise I'll get to you. All right. Here we go. Glue this one onto the top. Now, I glued, I want to show you this real quick. I got that crooked. I glued, may don't do perfect. Thank you, Nina. I glued this flap down because of the way I put my handles on. You guys can get creative and change your handles how you want them. And you don't have to glue this down. You can leave this up, all right? I'm gonna glue it down. The other thing I did that I'm not doing today, I used my corner rounder on these edges, even though, okay, it doesn't work perfectly. Because I cut these on an angle, it doesn't work perfectly. I still use my good old corner rounder. But I'm not gonna do it today. I wanna see how it looks with the with the crisper edges. All right, so let's glue crispy edges. That's how I like my pancakes. <laughs> let's glue this down. I'm excited, y'all. Vince's kitchen is being decorated as we speak. So if you're a Vinny's Vittle fan, 
his kitchen is being done and I'm so excited. Yeah, this will hold a light gift. It's pretty sturdy, pretty sturdy. All right, so look, this is the side of our bag. It's coming together. That's one side, let's do the other side. So let's glue it down. I know if you guys love it, it's coming. He's getting all, I think, I think it's just decoration right now. He's had an island made. I'm gonna be showing y'all pictures like before and after pictures. Follow, um, would y'all believe he doesn't have an Instagram yet? I'll let you know when he does. But follow my Instagram because I can put pictures up real quick on Instagram just super fast. So follow that so you can see some of the stuff we're going to be putting up this afternoon about it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and glue this down because I know I want to. Just like so. Don't y'all love paper engineering? Oh, I'm glad you asked, Mar uh, Mary. I hope I got that right, Mary. Marie. Um, this is 65 pound paper. All of this that I'm using is 65 pounds. And now this piece. I like the polka dot with the florals. And wait till you see how the handles do. Oh, they're so cute. So cute. Hey, Kim. All right, waiting for my, oh, that's cool. Yes, Vince is packing orders this morning. Amanda's letting you know. We have so many in there he's got to catch up on that he's helping this morning. And then Jeremy will be here this afternoon packing too. That's why he's like, don't make anything live yet. Let us get caught up. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Two front pieces, um, yeah, the front and the back piece. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue my side panel here, okay? And notice, this is important that you see this, it does not go all the way to the top, okay? Let me show you. Yes, Amanda's back at work today. See how it doesn't go all the way to the top? That's on purpose. If it came all the way to the top, it'd be a little bulky for this bend. So I let it go down a little bit so it does not go to the top. So if you get done and you're like, oh no, this isn't at the top, you're okay. That's how it's supposed to be. All right, now I'm gonna put some glue on here. And I have found, if you're using art glitter glue, the best thing to do is to scrub on a decent amount you know, as, mu as many places on the flap as you can, but scrub it on. Don't get it too wet. That's too much, okay? All right, and then I'm gonna line this up on the edge. It goes right to the edge, and we line up score line. See this? We line that bottom up just like that, okay? I'm not gonna close that just yet. Um, Joni, this is the fundraiser bottle, and all that, I did explain it, and you'll be able to see it in the blog post. Don't worry. I have a special blog post just for the bottle. All right, now I'm gonna put the other one on. I'm gonna put it on this side and scrub on some of this glue. Cause a lot of people tell me, you must, you must not rub a whole line. I don't, I scrub it on. I wish I could show you, but it's hard for you to see it, right? Um, this glue, this first run of fundraiser glue will probably sell out because we have 250 bottles in stock today. We have 2,500 okay we will have 2500 so we're gonna have them in batches so they'll go and they'll come back and they'll go and they'll come back until we sell 2500 and once they're gone I'll let you know I won't keep you in suspense all right now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna close these flaps up glue just like so remember scrub it on plus I don't have a fine metal tip on this one I should but I don't and I'm gonna bring this bottom up and close this side you can stand it up and get it to close really well Okay, just like that. Oh, I'll tell him he's not in here with me, but I'll tell him. Then I'm gonna close this side in. Scrubbing on some glue so we don't get too much. Same thing, close that in. I'm gonna stand this up and rub that down. By the way, you can always use sticky tape. You don't have to use art glitter glue for this. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna glue this bottom flap to this piece, okay? So this makes it even more sturdy. This is what I love about this one, all right? So I'm going to glue this down, just like so. Scrubbing on some glue, trying to get to all of the corners. Sorry about my door being so squeaky. All right, and then we're gonna glue this straight to the bottom. Here's an easy way to do it, watch. Pick this piece up and sit it down on it. And that will just kinda encapsulate everything you've done. And it should line up perfectly because you're using your score marks. See, look, it's not, it's not that hard to assemble. The part that I was worried about were the angles doing these side flaps, but this bag needed these pretty side flaps. It just did. It needed that shape. So scrubbing on some glue, scrubbing on some glue. 
scrub it up dub all right and now I can line this edge up with this side now something I like to do let me hold that for just a second and let that catch and then something I like to do is flip this over and run my hand in there and squish that down okay thank you it's totally styling <laughs> All right, so I got that side glued down. Now I'm just gonna do the other side. And you can just kind of lift it and get in here and scrub this on. Just using my hands here. Scrub it up, dub. Can you hear me scrubbing it? I really am. All right, and then I'm gonna let this catch for a second. Sorry if I'm missing anything because I'm looking away. I'm gonna flip this over, put my hand in here and rub this down. I love this. Oh, that's cute, Amy. Thank you. What a cute idea. Oh my goodness, because I love me. On my, I have a Michael Kors bag that's a, a crossbody one. I love that bag. All right, so look, here's the inside. Here's the front. The next thing I'm going to do is optional, but I want to show you this, okay? Watch this. Do you see how I have a bend in this one and no bend in this one? If you don't want a bend, don't put a bend. It is totally up to you, okay? I'm going to bend it. I want to show you how I bent it. All I did was take my fingers at the top and press in and line up these two pieces and do a little press. I'm not pressing at the bottom, okay? I'm just pressing at the top. See that? So now I have those little bends in there. I think it's cute. So, all right, let's work on handles. Handles are a little different, okay? This is not my handle design. I took this from somebody else. So I don't I don't really know who because a lot of people do this, okay? Um, a lot of people make their handles like this. So I don't know who to give credit to. Matter of fact, the person that I saw do it like the first time would be Edith Ray over at Scrapbooking With Me. That's the first time I ever saw it done, like actually done. All right, so the polka dot is gonna be my handle. You see how I've got this navy as my handle here, okay? The polka dot's gonna be my handle. So I'm gonna flip this over and score on the back. Look what I did. I used the same pattern so I knew it would match, right? Now, this is one and one and a quarter inches wide. I want to score it in half. I think it's important to score this or at least fold it on a ruler because it needs it the way you're going to use it, okay? So, I'm going to count five eighths. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to score this at five eighths. Five eighths are five score lines. Each score line is an eighth. So if you count five, that's five eighths. So I scored that one. Now I'm gonna bring this one over and score it at five eighths, which is right there. It's actually one eighth away from a half. All right, so I got those scored. Now, I do think this is important, but you know what I could do? Do I wanna do that? I'm kind of afraid to, but I think I will. Okay. You can use your corner rounder, but since I'm doing this one a tiny bit different and everybody can do them different, I'm going to use my angle punch instead and see what we get. So on the bottoms of these, oh, by the way, I scored all the way down. I don't think it matters. Some people only score to like here and you'll see why in a few minutes, but I scored all the way down because it doesn't change the aesthetic for me. I don't think you see it well enough for it to be a problem. All right, I'm going to put this in my large angle punch. Oh yeah, I think this will be cute. All right, so I'm angle punching two ends this one and the other one. This one and this one. So now I have that kind of piece. Well, I have that on both ends. I'm going to do it with both. Yeah, I like this little angle. I think that'll be cute, especially since I didn't round anything on this particular bag. Everything's angle angular. So we'll do it like that. All right. Oh, thanks. All right. Now I'm going to fold this. Okay. And I'm only going to concentrate on about that much. Let me sit it like that. See how I'm leaving these pieces to be the piece that attached to the bag? If you need to measure them, measure them. But I'm such an eyeballer. Let me measure it for you. That's two inches. So it's about two inches on either end. So I'm only folding it that middle section, okay? Before I glue this, because I think this works better, I'm going to kind of do that whole rubbing thing I do with this bone folder just to kind of get that going, okay? If this wasn't the corner rounder, this was the corner angle punch. The angle punch, I guess I should say. Um, it's this one. Large angle, small angle. Did I say angel? <laughs> Large angle, small angle. This is the angle one. All right, let's do the same thing here. Again, I'm such an eyeballer, y'all. I just don't like to measure if I don't have to. And in some places, you just really don't have to. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you, okay? You're not going to get a perfect fold. 
because you're not perfect and that's okay. You're going to have a little bit there, okay? You're going to have a little bit, maybe a lot of bit like that. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. All I want to do is make sure I put this part of the handle up, okay? If I put this part up, you're going to see my not perfectness, okay? I want this part to be up. It'll hide it. Don't stress about it. Don't stress. All right, let's glue. I also discovered that I do better if I put a pretty good, like I cover all sections with glue, but still just scrubbing it. Don't get it too wet because you'll have to fight with the extra glue. Totally could use sticky tape here. I probably would suggest sticky tape. I just didn't. I just didn't pull any out and bring it to my work surface. All right, and I still like to kind of work it like this, right? I like to kind of go ahead and get that angle going, if that makes sense. I say that all the time, if that makes sense. <laughs> if it doesn't make sense, it's still how I do it. <laughs> so. All right, I'm going to hold these for a second because I'm using wet glue. Any questions about this purse so far? Has, has it made pretty good sense? The cool thing is, except for like the trimming, the first trimming, um, we've done this so far in 45 minutes, right? Okay, here we go. Yeah, we need a not perfect one. That is such a good idea, Charmaine. We need a not per hashtag not perfect so you can show your mistakes too. I've really been trying to work harder to leave my mistakes in for you guys. If it's a mistake that can be easily fixed or um, I don't have to like start over to do it, I try to leave them in so you guys can see that we all make those mistakes. So I've been trying to do that lately because so many of you tell me that it really helps you and kind of empowers you to craft because you're like, if you can make a mistake, well, we all make mistakes. We just know how to edit, right? You guys don't have the luxury of editing those things out, right? Okay, so I've got that glue down. I'm going to do a little bend to it. doesn't have to be perfect, again, because I don't do it right. Okay, now I'm going to show you exactly how I did this. And if you want to poke holes, you can. You can, at this point, poke a couple holes for your brads. I'm not going to. I'm going to show you exactly how I do this. Again, I'm an eyeball person, so I'm going to lay this down a little bit. I just take this little piece. Look how cute this is. Just look how quick that changes the look of this. I just take this little piece and eyeball them at the same height and push them, okay? And I know this is going to work. So I'm going to glue one down, just like this. Plenty of glue, but not too much, okay? Yeah, that's what I wanted it for, was to put my mother's Mother's Day gift in. And I've got to get, i got to make one more because I have to have three of these. Because <laughs> I have mom. I have my stepmom and I have my mother-in-law. So I don't know what's going in them yet. We'll see, I'll have to figure that part out. All right, now then I'm gonna eyeball this one, add some glue and stick it down. The good thing about using wet glue here is it gives me a second to move it wherever I need to move it, okay? So I'm gonna put this one on and eyeball it and stick it down. And the good thing is we're going to add brads to this. So if you don't feel like yours is very sturdy, don't worry. Because you're going to have those, those brads on it. I don't think I got that one quite in the right spot. But you know what? That can be the back. Okay. <laughs> Let's do the front. Let's do the front now and hope we get it right. And if we don't, guess what? They're both going to be the back. We'll hand it to them sideways. <laughs> I really do feel like that, y'all. Anybody that you give this to is going to go, you made this out of paper? They're not going to go, hmm, that is an eighth of an inch off and crooked to one side. <laughs> They're not going to do that. <laughs> They're going to be like, how long did that take? And you're going to go, oh, 45 minutes. They're never going to believe it. Do you see how I'm contorting this to put glue on the back? You don't have to be this crazy. You can do it. You can lay it down if you need to. <laughs> oh my goodness. If somebody does critique your stuff like that, Maybe you should buy them store-bought stuff and make pretty stuff for people who don't critique your stuff. You know, it's nice when you can give somebody something and they're just like, oh, wow, that's so cool. All right, I'm moving this one around to get it in place, but we're getting there pretty good. I'm gonna let this be the front. Everybody, some people need store-bought stuff, y'all. Let's just be honest. <laughs> Look how cute. It's so cute. And I have that one crooked again. You ain't gonna stress. I think this is a cute bag, right? Another thing, do I want to do it on this one? Let me see something. Okay, so I gotta have that piece. You know these pieces I messed up? <laughs> they have that little polka dot on the back. I think it'd be cute to have a stripe running down. I think I'm gonna do that on this one. Let me measure this and say, now this is totally where you just have fun, okay? What is this gap? This gap is about a half an inch. Let's see what we can do. 
Some of the purses I saw like on Pinterest, good Lord, y'all, go do a Pinterest search for purses. You will have so much fun with that and you'll get so many ideas. Um, and if you have a favorite purse, match it, right? That would be fun. I'm gonna cut this down in half inch strips and use this piece. See, it's not wasted after all. I'm gonna need four pieces. So I'm gonna do it to the front and the back. And I'm gonna get lucky if this works. Yay, it did. I love this trimmer, y'all. I just love it. All right, then I need one more piece right here. Now listen, don't give your ideas away. Here's what I want you to do. Head over, if you're not a member of our Facebook group, please go join it, even if you don't do Facebook. Just join Facebook to be a member of our group. That is the place we can share photos and inspiration of the things that we make, and you guys will love it. Sorry, I had to take a drink. I've been talking for way too long. <laughs> a lot of people probably agree with that all the time. I'm gonna do a dry run. I want this to run here. Oh, that is cute. Look at that, y'all, that's cute. Okay, let me see how long this is, because I need to trim these off. I should have measured that before. So four and a quarter. All right, I'm gonna see if I can cut them all at one time. Oh, Miss Jones on her second cup of, of coffee today. Probably not today. Since the show started? <gasps> that would be really nice, wouldn't it? You know what? Do any of you have the Cricut faux leather? Because I agree, I think it'd be beautiful. I think the Cricut faux leather would be adorable for this. I almost did it today in this video, but because I was gonna have to do it live, I wanted to be really, really um, sure it was gonna, everything was gonna work out. So, all right. So now we're ready to put those down. And these would be cute if you scalloped them or something, but we're just doing this, you know, off the cuff. So, put some glue on, just like so. And then I'm gonna glue this guy in place. I love our Facebook group. The other thing is I can get to you guys quicker with updates and stuff, so it's hard on um, YouTube to give you updates. On the fly, anyway. But the live will probably make that better because we'll be able to, you know, just do a quick live. That's going to be cute, isn't it? See, this is the fun part when you can, like, turn these into something totally different just by cutting and snipping. Oh, and I want it. Well, I'm not going to do it. I was going to, I'll show you what I did on my other purse. Let me glue this one down. I was going to show you how to do that. And I will show you, but I'm not going to do it to this one. Let me put this into place. Let me eyeball that they're kind of straight. Let me show you this. Okay. So on this bag, I went into the paper pad and the back of the paper pad has these stickers. So that's just a sticker strip from one of the paper pads. And I thought that was cute right there. I thought it went perfect. I'm loving this one. I'm loving this one. So you see how you can just play around? I love it. All right. Who thinks they can do this one? Who thinks they can master? Even though it's a little trickier, you know, you got to do some measurements and stuff like that. And probably this always happens. Probably somebody will be like, man, you did that the hard way. And that's fine. It's just the way my brain works. And sometimes that's scary. <laughs> Good. I feel good about it. It took me a while to get all the measurements worked out and it took me a while to be able to do it where I could teach it. I wanted to make sure I could teach it and that's kind of the reason we did it the way we did it. Sometimes I do things weird because I know people can understand it if I do it that, you know, the way I did it. All right. Now, let me show you. I have these brads. These were sent to me. Um, I don't remember who sent them to me, but these look like buttons and I use them all the time. See those little buttons? I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. Remember how I told you you could poke holes if you wanted? But I'm not, and I'll show you why. I'm gonna get four of these dudes out, and get my pokey tool. You thought I was gonna do a whole project without this tool, didn't you? Nope. <laughs> I'm gonna pick a spot about right here, and I'm just gonna start poking that in, and I'm using it like a drill bit. Now listen, you think my hand's behind it, but it's not. I've separated my fingers, and I'm not pushing so hard as I'm gonna fold the paper, See how I just got that in there and did a little work around, right? Just kind of roll it around. Then I'm gonna put my brad in. Now, I did not worry about putting this brad in beforehand. I'll tell you why. Some people might wanna hide the workings of the brad. These little workings are white and they're not gonna stress me. You know, they're, I'm not gonna worry if you can see them, you know? So don't worry about that. But if you need to put them in, you can always put them under the flap and then glue the flap down if you need to do that. It doesn't bother me. All right, let's do another one right here. Again, not pushing so hard as to fold the paper in, just enough to get it in there. And then I'm gonna roll it around and make it big enough for my brad to go through. 
I think I missed something. I see people saying something. I'm, uh, Tara must not be feeling good. All right. Here we go. So look. Oh my goodness, those little buttons are so cute. Oh, now let's do the others. I may only do the front side since this is taking a minute because I don't want to be here longer than an hour. I try so hard not to. So we may just do this side and I'll finish it off camera. Oop, wrong spot. Let's go there. All right. Get that poked in there. Wiggle it around so my brad will go in. Oh, you need eight brads. You need four for one side, four for the other. If you do it like this. So if you're getting your supplies together, you'll need eight of these dudes. All right. And then one more. Right here. Oh, good. That went in fairly easy. I thought it was going to fight me. All right. So there's those little buttons. Give me a break. Give me a break. I want to put something right there. Let me see if I have them laying here. I think my pearls are still laying beside me. Yeah. From the other day. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let me get these out of here. How many do I want to put there? I think three will be good. Here we go. Three. Oh, look, I have three just ready right here. All right, let's see if I can do it with you guys being able to see what I'm doing. I'll pick these up. These are connected together, which is cool. They have the adhesive already on them. And these are Paper Studio, so these are Hobby Lobby. I'm going to place this down. And... Yeah, that's cute. You could go crazy, right? You could just put all kinds of stuff on this. I'm having to focus right here. Come on, come on. Okay. I'm only going to do the front. <laughs> I'll do the back when we get off camera. That's just something to add right there to kind of look like it's a little buckle holding that down. All right, let's do the bow. You've seen me do this bow before? I thought I would do one more, okay? So, here we go. Needs glitter. Uh-oh. Somebody doesn't know Maymay very well. <laughs> All right. I thought it'd be cute to do a bow the same color as the purse. Um, so, I'm going to use this little polka dot to put the, per the bow up there. This bow is going to be too long, but I don't know how much too long it's going to be. So, I just went ahead and cut myself a strip that's one and a quarter by 12. Okay? So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold this in half. You've seen me do this bow before. Fold it in half, okay? Then I'm gonna take a bottom loose flap and bring it up to that fold in the half right here. And then I'm gonna fold that one down, okay? Then I'm gonna bring this other loose flap and fold it down. I'm just accordion, accor oh, I can't do it. I'm just making a W <laughs> out of this paper. If you turn it upside down, it's a neum. You'd think I would've said a neum, right? Cause I may may, but it's a W, okay? Now what I'm gonna do, <laughs> I'm going to take my bone folder and this middle section. Oh, do you like that? Okay. This middle section, I'm just going to do a little curl like that. Just like so. You can totally make this with your um, envelope punch board. There's lots of different bows out there. Okay. OW for wow. That's cool. Now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to do an angle punch here. An angle punch. An angle cut. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> that just made me think of something. Yes, if you have this, oh, look what we just discovered. I'm going to redo this. <laughs> I want to see if this works 100%. How did I not think about this before, y'all? How in the world? Am I being annoying? Sorry if I am. I got to try this. <laughs> I may just make this bow even easier, y'all. You can do it by hand, and I've got videos on that, okay? I've got videos showing you how to do that, so no worries there. We got to try this. <laughs> the joy of live video. Sorry. I hope I'm not annoying you. Okay, let's fold this in half. I'll do it like super fast. Fold in half. Fold this to here and in half. Look, I'm hurrying so it makes me shake. <sighs> oh, you've never seen my bow making trick? All right, I'll show you both. All right, I got to try this and see if this works, okay? So now that I've done this, I've got my angle punch. I'm going to put this in an angle punch. I'm going to put this in an angle punch. And I'm using the large side, okay? Then I'm going to fold this one. Oh my goodness. And angle punch both edges of that one. Fold this one in. How have I not thought about this before, y'all? This is my favorite punch in the world. This, we sell this in our store because it's like my very favorite. So now look what we just did. Oh my goodness. With the angle punch. Let me show you what I do when I don't use the angle punch. Same thing, okay? 
I just make a snip angle and try to make them the same. They don't have to be exact. They kind of hide in the wash. They kind of go away. Then I'm going to angle this one and angle this one. Just snipping it at every fold. Okay. Going right here to this fold. Going to angle this one and angle this one. Can y'all hear how quiet it got in the background? You know why? Because Bible study starts at one. So now they're all in the room with the door shut. <laughs> All right, so this is how I do it on the fly. Just do my little points like that, right? I'm gonna go ahead and curl this one. I'm really excited about this. Really excited. That's so funny, Leanne, that you would say she has a dream job because yes, yeah, she, she dreams about it. She dreams about all the stuff we still have to get done, which is so funny. We talked about that, it's funny. All right, I'm gonna put a little glue on either side of that center fold, okay? I'm gonna bring one into the middle and line it up like so, not folding it, just bringing them both in and lining those angles up. Let me get that where you can see it. You can, you know, check it, pick it up. You can use sticky tape, you can use wet glue, whatever you got. I'm gonna push that down on the table for a second and hold it. Oh no, have a good afternoon, Barbara. I just caught that. All right, so there are the two, that's the front piece. See how we did that? We just folded those down, okay? Then I'm gonna put a little glue on the inside here and the inside here. Open these flaps up. And then I'm gonna put this on my work surface and push it down in the middle. And that will glue those flaps down, okay? This works either way. I'm doing the same thing. This is the one I cut by hand with the points. You can do the same thing. And let me tell you something. I'm gonna sit that there for a second. If you do this and your points don't line up, just trim them. Like, look. So, I got that one lined up good on one side. But this side is, well, it is kind of good. Hold on. <laughs> it's kind of good. But if it's not, just trim it. That piece is a little slim, right? But if it's not, trim it. All right, this is too long for me. I'm going to trim some off. So that's about three quarters of an inch. So I probably made it about an inch and a half too long, but I can handle losing that little bit of paper. Now I'm going to make a point. So slice up the middle, then from corner to middle. And then from corner to middle. I feel like I'm hiding that. No, you can see it. So I made that little corner, right? Same thing over here. So I'm gonna go slice, corner to middle, corner to middle, ah, just like so. All right, and then I'm gonna put a strip in the middle of this, and I didn't cut one. I wonder if I wanna use that. Yeah, I do. I'm just gonna cut myself just a little strip to go in the middle. It doesn't have to be like, um, I'm just going to cut this and see what I need of it. I'll show you. I think I had a strip of that left I could have used. If you have some scraps, use some of your scraps, okay? All right. I'm going to put a little glue here, just like this. I'm going to put this little guy on in the middle in the back. Hold it with one finger, and then I'm just going to wrap it around. And whatever I don't need, I'll snip away. I'm just wrapping that around the middle of the bow, okay? Snip, open this up, put a little glue in there. Close that down, hold it shut. Look at that. Perfect bow, easy peasy. I actually love how it turns out with the angle punch, y'all. I love this, okay? Now this is gonna get glued right here. Look how cute, I like it. On my other bag, I'll show you in a second, I hung a little um, pendant that I got from Gareth's store. But I called, I messaged Gareth and he doesn't carry that particular one anymore, but he has a whole bunch of other ones. Let me show you. I hung this little um, anchor with some Baker's twine and he doesn't have that very one, but he's got so many. So check out G's Creations. Tamith, you'll type in his website for us. Look guys, there's the finished front. <laughs> the back is not finished, but I can finish it later. I think that's cute. Do you guys like it? I think it worked out well. I'm pretty happy with it. Let me show you guys a tip. When you get these bottles, see I don't have a tip on it. See all that glue at the top? Clean that off before you put your cap back on. That will keep you from getting gunky under this cap. Okay, and you get a nice clean, so just clean that little tip off. All right, I know we have questions, so let me see. This bottle will be live within 30 minutes of the video going up, okay? I did not put a bow on both sides. I only put a bow on one side. That lets you know where the front is, but you could totally put one on both sides. But most purses, you know, they kind of save stuff and they don't put them on both sides either. Plus, think if you were carrying this, you wouldn't want that bow to rub on your on your clothes. So just one bow is what I put on. Um, 
and the paper pads will go live after this and there's several new things when you go to the store just go to shop and look at new products and all the new stuff will be there we're gonna have a blog post 100% dedicated to this so you can understand what the fundraiser is for but I want to tell you real quick we're raising money for juvenile diabetes research um, half of the ha, all right a portion of the proceeds from this bottle go to two places we're splitting it in half half goes to Jeremy who is our packer and shipper here at the store for his son's medical bills he recently incurred when he found out he was a TD1 which is a type 1 diabetic and then um, the other half will go to JDRF. It's the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and it's actually going to go to them in Ryan's name, okay? You don't need a pen for this bottle and this top. If you put the fine metal tip on, then you do want a pen. But if you're only going to use the regular top like this, just use it like that. And you can see you can use it either way. Some people love that metal top, and some people don't, and I'm showing you either way, okay? So there's that information. All right, did I answer everything? Oh my gosh, there's so many new paper packs. They're so pretty. All right, six, uh, five minutes over. That's not bad considering we did all of this, right? Can you make a friendship umbrella? What is that? I don't know what that is. Yes, this this gold bottle, look, here's the deal, right? It's zebra, it's red, it's gold. It's May May's favorite things. That's the point of this. I love this. Um, and it's a limited edition bottle, guys. So even if you just get this bottle to have on your shelf, you can refill it with the 16 ounce or the eight ounce refill, okay? It comes just like this. This is what you get. And by the way, we're hand sticking these labels on so you'll know that the people here did it. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you said that, Laura. Yes. Um, we're, oh, you can't donate to his medical bills. You can don't, okay, Ryan is doing the 5K walk in November and he's doing fundraising for that. You can donate to that and it is in the blog post that will be up this afternoon, okay? We'll share that, we'll share the blog post everywhere too when we get it done. It is Art Glitter Glue. This is Art Glitter Glue. It's the same product. They actually sent, they bottled it for me, capped it, bottled it, sent it to me without labels. Look, here's how we got it, okay? And we labeled it, but they sent it like this to me so we could do the label. And um, it's two ounces. I'm glad you asked that because I keep forgetting to say that. It's a two ounce bottle. So, all right. I think that's it, guys. I know. How awesome of Art Glitter Glue. They are so great to work with us on that. How awesome. I don't want to do a GoFundMe for Jeremy because I don't want to open that up for him. Um, that's something that he's very, very, very grateful for what we're going to be able to raise for him. And just to let you guys know, it, it'll be significant for them. And we appreciate you guys so much. So much. Yes, Leanne, they did contribute to the cause. I don't want to say numbers because that's not, you know, that's their thing. But they did. Them doing this... They did, but I don't want to say what they did. That's not fair. I don't think that's fair to me to say that, but um, they took care of us very well to get us this product. Let me say that. They did it. They're awesome. The, if you, the folks that are Glitter Glue are awesome. They know it, and I love them, and they know I love them, and I think they love me. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. They really do have a big heart. The lady who invented this, Barbara, she is a very sweet lady, and all her crew is amazing. So, yes, they did do their part. Yeah, that's not my place to say. Not my place. So, anyway. All right, guys. I love you very much. I'm going to finish this because I think it's time to go get some blog posts ready and things like that. Oh, thanks, Kim. $4.95. It's really the regular price, um, but it's not. I mean, it, it's not. We didn't inflate the price at all. We're we're all, like, May May Made It is giving up, like, how do you say that? May May Made It's doing their part, or Glitter Glue's doing their part, and we're going to make this happen for with 2,500 bottles. That's all we're going to have of this. So, it'll be great. It will be great. Everyone will be very, very, very blessed. All right, guys. Go back and watch this at the beginning. Oh, this, thanks, Naoka. This polka dot here is from I Love Winter Paper Pad, and this one here, no, I take that back. This polka dot is from... Maybe the Traveler, the Getaway. <laughs> and this is from I Love Winter. I pulled two packs together to get the navy. I enjoyed both of these colors. So they're from two different packs I just had sitting around. This was my prototype bag. This was the very first one I made. And that's why I showed y'all a picture and said, do y'all want to see this? So um, there you go. There you go. All right, guys. Love you very much. Oh, thank you so much. That's so sweet. I will talk to you guys again real soon. Watch for me on Facebook because I'm going to try to get back to Facebook Live. Oh, the contest. 
I keep forgetting everything. Okay, hashtag sophisticated satchel. That's what you want to put in your post. When you make one of these bags, and, I, and we are asking that you use this pattern, but dress it up any way you want, okay? Over on our Facebook group, do hashtag sophisticated satchel. This contest is going to run from today through not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after. That's when we're going to announce the winner for a $15 gift certificate to the store, okay? So hashtag sophisticated satchel. That's what we're calling this one because I think it, well, actually, Tamitha said it looks sophisticated and I said it looked like a satchel, so we put them together. <laughs> That's how we ended up with hashtag sophisticated satchel, which may be hard to spell, but somebody will type it so you can get it. And if you get close, we're good. But sophisticated satchel on Maymay May Made It and so did I. Please go join our group. If you're new here, go join our group. You will love it. You will love our group and the inspiration over on Facebook. Even if you only sign, to, sign up to Facebook to join one group, just join ours. It's fantastic and we work real hard to keep it safe and fun and there's no links and there's no, you don't have to worry about getting a virus from that because we don't let it happen, okay? So, May May made it and so did I. There's a link in the bottom of this video once it goes live or once it gets published. All right, guys, love you very much. I'll talk to you next time. Have a great one. Bye-bye.